With all the cheerleading I've been doing for formal methods, it might seem as though as I'm being a little, oh, overly enthusiastic. That's natural for me. I love this material. I enjoy teaching it and doing it. So one natural response in return might be to reject it all as a sales job. Indeed, as long as formal methods have been around, there have been those who campaign for them and those who shun them. Or as Anthony Hall wrote in 1990, formal methods are controversial. Their advocates claim that they can revolutionize development, or their detractors think they are impossibly difficult. Meanwhile, for most people, formal methods are so unfamiliar that it is difficult to judge the competing claims. Some of the beliefs about formal methods have been exaggerated and have acquired almost the status of myths. Hall continues to present seven myths he thought were prevalent at the time. It's worth reviewing those now because to some extent they persist today and to some extent maybe are true or false today. Myth number one, formal methods can guarantee that software is perfect. Of course not. The point, from my perspective, is to make software better, not perfect. Now, sometimes those of us who advocate for formal methods, and I am guilty here, have, have been known to overstate what formal methods achieve. It doesn't help that the field was born in part out of the lofty goals of mathematical logic in the early 20th century, which, as I discussed earlier, were dashed against the rocks of impossibility. It also doesn't help with the perception that some research is ever striving towards making the guarantees provided by formal methods more perfect, as research should. Hall draws an analogy with mechanical engineering. An engineer designing a crane uses idealized mathematical, that is formal models, and deductive reasoning to predict the real-world performance of the crane, based on properties such as mass and load-bearing capacity. But those predictions cannot guarantee the crane will be perfect. Sometimes cranes, or buildings, or bridges fail. That doesn't mean mechanical engineers would ever consider abandoning those formal methods of theirs. The difference with software engineers is that formal models of software have had much less time to mature and be accepted than other engineering fields. And even with formal methods, mistakes can be made. Maybe there are errors in a formal specification, or maybe there are errors in proofs, or errors in the tools used to check or construct proofs. But these errors are better exposed by formal methods than the equivalent errors would be with informal methods. An error in a formal specification or proof can be debated with much better clarity than an ambiguity in an English sentence. Errors in generic proof construction tools are highly unlikely to be correlated with the domain-specific applications they're used to develop. Myth number two, formal methods are all about theorem proving. Specifications come first, then proofs about programs, which is to say, program verification. Now, Software Foundations is likely to lean into this myth maybe more than Hall would like, but his point is that writing a formal specification can be a benefit to developers, even if they never proceed to the harder task of proving their code satisfies the specification. The act of writing the formal specification can clarify requirements and refine ambiguities. Myth number three, formal methods are only useful for safety critical systems. I've mentioned already the use of formal methods for compilers, for operating systems, for cryptography. Other recent uses include web browser kernels, machine learning systems, distributed systems, quantum circuits, constraint solvers, file systems, microprocessor design, electronic cache, smart cards, biometric access control, and contactless cards. There was a recent communications of this ACM article that reported on how Amazon uses formal methods for web services. What all these have in common is exactly what I mentioned before when discussing inductive versus deductive reasoning. The effort to apply formal methods is repaid by the elimination of consequences of program errors. An error in the average iPhone app might not have any serious consequences that make application of formal methods worthwhile. But all these high value systems, whether they're safety critical or security critical or financially critical, can benefit from the use of formal methods, 
And that's to become better, not necessarily perfect again. Myth number four. Formal methods require highly trained mathematicians. The mathematics required for some kinds of formal methods, like the Z notation I mentioned before, is essentially just first-order logic. Anyone who's taken a college-level discrete math class should be capable of that, uh, even if such a class does not re really qualify them as a highly trained mathematician. The article about Amazon I just mentioned uh, similarly reports that most developers have no trouble learning to write specifications with the temporal logic used by TLA+, even if that logic is a little beyond your average discrete math class. Nonetheless, Hall writes, I quote, a much higher level of mathematical skill is needed if you intend to go beyond formal specification and carry out a fully formal development that includes proofs, end quote. And we're going to see that with Coq in Software Foundations. To get beyond any superficial use of it requires at least some understanding of functional programming and type systems and type theory. Also required is the facility to think precisely yet creatively, much like a trained mathematician. Myth number five, formal methods increase the cost of development. Hall argued in 1990 that they decrease the cost. I'm not sure this argument has been conclusively settled in the last 30 years, to be honest. Myth number six, formal methods are unacceptable to users. By this, Hall means communicating requirements to clients, that those are the users he has in mind here, during the development process by using formal specifications. Indeed, if few developers understand formal specifications, then even fewer clients would. His point, though, uh, was that you could use formal specifications and then explain them to clients in informal ways, such as paraphrases and diagrams. Myth number seven, formal methods are not used on large, real-scale software. Hall offered evidence in his original 1990 paper to combat this myth, and now, 30 years later, we do have abundant evidence that formal methods are being used on real, large-scale software. And if you'll allow me, I'll introduce my own myth, which just might be true. Formal methods are highly addictive. When working on proofs, sometimes I get so into it that I lose track of time. Come make dinner, my family says. Just one more proof, I reply. I find it to be a great deal of fun to get the computer to accept my verifications of programs. I hope that you will too. So with that, I will conclude my own thoughts on the preface to logical foundations. Next, we'll start the chapter titled Basics and start using Coq to write programs and prove theorems. <laughs>